Few things are more important to a 3D action platformer than movement that's both fun and responsive. And Blue Fire takes that fact to heart. Its assortment of agile abilities not only look great in action, but also offer the kind of precise control needed to overcome its demanding enemies and obstacles alike. While there's a bit too much reliance on favoring backtracking over dungeons, its array of treacherous yet addicting challenge rooms had me happily running, jumping, and dashing through them again and again. At first glance, Blue Fire may resemble what Hollow Knight might look like in a 3D space. It's got plenty of familiar ideas in terms of exploration and combat. The few scattered survivors that aren't trying to kill you have small quests for you, ones that are actually attracting your log, which is something I've always wished for in games with sprawling worlds like this one. You can even find unequipped spirits to modify and enhance your abilities to a near ridiculous degree. And yet, developer Roby Studios has built Blue Fire's platforming mechanics in a way that feels tailored for 3D space, with a level of control that nearly always left me with no one to blame but myself whenever I met my demise. Control over the length and angle of your dashes, and the inclusion of a stamina bar for wall running and jumping is a godsend to learn the limits of your parkour abilities. Each area, challenge room, and even some boss fights make clever use of its terrain, pushing you to experiment with your platforming powers and figure out how best to come out on top. When you aren't dodging spike traps or pits full of cryptodoos, you'll be strafing and zipping around shadowy creatures looking to tear you to pieces. Your character can slice and dice with dual swords, but don't expect to be able to take many hits in return. Since your shield uses mana and doesn't last long, the best defense usually turns out to be moving quickly to avoid getting hit altogether. Fights never become crushingly difficult, but Blue Fire's protagonist is remarkably squishy, so much so that even using a shield spell to guard melee attacks can send you flying backwards. Thankfully, the inclusion of targeted dashes allowed me to get right back into the fight and even contend with floating adversaries otherwise out of reach. Progression in Blue Fire is sometimes gated by its story, but mostly opens up thanks to the moving abilities you unlock. By the end of my 12-hour adventure, I was practically flying across areas that once had me carefully plotting every single jump, thanks in part to some upgrade boosts to give me even more airtime. Seeing these areas in a new light helps soften the blow of Blue Fire's reliance on backtracking. Early on, your pint-sized hero was asked to assist the gods by clearing out fun little mini-dungeons full of puzzle rooms, keys and chests, and locked doors leading to new abilities and corrupted bosses. These areas felt like The Legend of Zelda more than anything else, and had me eager for more. This deity-saving setup led me to believe I'd be helping out each of Blue Fire's five gods in order to beat back the shadow corrupting the castle. But to my dismay, things quickly switch gears. Blue Fire abruptly drops the dungeon idea in favor of seeking out a few Shadow Lord bosses directly. Instead of facing new contained challenges, this had me mostly returning to earlier regions to press previously enacted buttons or collecting orbs to unlock boss doors, making it feel like an unexpectedly quick sprint to the finish. This pivot might have worked better if the first half of Blue Fire's adventure lasted a bit longer, but I was happy to see at least one sizable new region to explore, and all the new bosses found ways to put my aerial dodging and combat skills to the test. As entertaining as Blue Fire's enemies are, the optional challenge rooms called Voids steal the spotlight. Similar to Super Mario Sunshine's secret levels or A Hat in Time's rifts, Voids test your platforming skills in the best possible way. Each Void presents a new trial to overcome and makes you feel like a platforming paragon for beating them. Even if you don't manage to make it to the end of a Void and upgrade your max health, collecting tokens along the way will let you unlock more spirit slots, which means more chances to boost your parkour abilities to overcome that seemingly impossible part of the gauntlet. Even after completing the story, I immediately dove back in to finish every last void, the lure of just one more attempt proving impossible to ignore. Blue Fire provides an impeccable platforming experience with just the right balance of abilities to master and challenges to test you, making its bleak and corrupted world a joy to explore. Its Zelda-like dungeon experiences may end a bit too soon before it begins relying on overly familiar backtracking, but it doesn't dull the fun of dashing around obstacles and fighting enemies alike. And even when the pacing of its main path falters slightly, the irresistible lure of its inventive challenge rooms kept me coming back for more. Be sure to also check out the first minutes of Blue Fire, and for everything else, stick with IGN.